In this video tutorial, we will look at physical properties of ionic and covalent compounds. In our previous video, we discussed how ionic bonds form. They typically occur between atoms with a weak attraction for electrons, those are usually metals, and another with a strong attraction for electrons, which are usually nonmetals. In this case, fluorine's attraction for electrons is so strong, it's able to grab onto lithium's valence electron and transfer it permanently into fluorine's valence shell. This creates a fluorine anion with a charge of 1 minus. Meanwhile, a lithium cation is produced with a charge of 1 plus. Now that these two ions are stable, they do not need each other for stability anymore. So why are they still bonded together? That's because opposites attract. The opposite charges, the electrostatic attraction between these two ions, keeps them held together. We call this attraction an ionic bond because it's a bond between two oppositely charged ions. Now if you recall, ionic compounds tend to exist in a crystal lattice structure. So a crystal lattice structure is one where it just repeats over and over again, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. This imparts the following physical properties. A, they have a high melting point and a high boiling point. Let's look at this fluorine anion for example. In order for you to remove this fluorine anion from this crystal lattice structure, you'd have to overcome all the electrostatic attraction from the lithium cations surrounding it in order to pull it out. And that's a large amount of energy required to do that. Hence the high melting point and high boiling points for these ionic crystals. As we have seen previously, water is a polar molecule with one end partially negatively charged and the other end partially positively charged. As such, the partial positive end of the hydrogen atom is able to latch on and attract onto the negative anion and pull it apart from the crystal lattice structure. All right, so the partial positive hydrogens are attracted to the negative anion and they're able to pull it apart. Similarly, the partial negative oxygen end can latch onto the positive cation and pull it apart from the uh, crystal lattice structure. This is why many ionic compounds are going to be water soluble, but only if the ion ion attraction, so the attraction that holds the ion together, is weaker than the ion dipole attraction, so the attraction for the water molecule. So if the attraction for the water molecule is stronger than the attraction between ions, then yes, it will be soluble. On the other hand, if the attraction for water is weaker than the attraction between ions, then at that point we would say it's insoluble. Finally, if you have individual ions that are freely moving around, either because they were dissolved in water, for instance, or melted into a liquid format, as long as these ions are free to move, you have electrical conductivity. A solution that conducts electricity is known as an electrolyte. Now, due to the nature of ionic bonds, we do not know which cation donated its electrons to which anion. So this lithium cation, we don't know if it donated its electrons to this fluorine, this fluorine, this fluorine, or this fluorine. We don't know, and in the end, it really doesn't matter. But because we don't know which pair of atoms were originally involved with the original exchange of electrons, we cannot refer to them as molecules. Instead, you're going to call them formula units, which is defined as the lowest ratio of atoms required to create a stable compound. So in the example of lithium and fluorine, you only need one lithium atom and one fluorine atom to exchange electrons in order to achieve stability. You don't need two lithiums or two fluorines, just a one to one ratio is necessary to achieve stability. Similarly, magnesium chloride only requires one magnesium for every two chlorines in order to donate their electrons in a way that allows them to achieve stability. While sodium chloride has a one to one lowest ratio and aluminum fluoride has a one to three lowest ratio. Finally, ionic compounds tend to be hard and brittle. This crystal lattice structure of alternating opposite charges, positive, negative, positive, negative, holds those ions tightly in place. So you're going to need a lot of force to get these guys to move. That's why the ionic crystals tend to be very hard. But if you do strike it with enough force, you can shift this crystal lattice structure. But in so doing, now you have like charges side by side. And as we know, like charges will repel each other, and that's why Crystals generally don't dent, they're not usually malleable or uh, flexible. Instead, when you hit them, they will shatter along these fracture lines. So, as you can see, form follows function. By transferring electrons from one atom to another, we form ions. These ions are then electrostatically attracted to each other, creating an ionic bond. And compounds formed from these ionic bonds have very unique physical properties. Now, if you recall, nonpolar covalent bonds typically occur between atoms with a strong but similar attraction for bonding pair electrons. This usually occurs between a nonmetal and a nonmetal. 
because neither side is able to wrestle the electron away from the other, they end up sharing the electrons fairly equally. As such, neither side is more positive or negative than the other. This results in very little polarity or charge separation, so these atoms are going to be neutrally charged for the most part. Because these molecules are neutral and neutral, there's no positive, no negative, because they're equally sharing electrons, neutral and neutral, they don't really attract each other very well. And because they don't attract each other very well, it's quite easy to disrupt this intermolecular force. Alright, so during a physical change like boiling or dissolving, it is the intermolecular force that breaks up, that is being disrupted, All right, not the intra. My students typically have difficulties remembering this, so I ask them, is it easier for you to break up with a friend, or is it easier for you to break up with your arm? I would hope that it's easier to break up with a friend. Uh, finding a new friend should be a lot easier than finding a new arm. All right, so when we are undergoing a physical change, it's much easier to disrupt the intermolecular force than the intramolecular force. Okay, so due to the weak intermolecular force, you're going to have a low melting point, low boiling point. Very little energy is required to overcome the weak intermolecular forces that hold separate molecules together. As we saw before, Water molecules are polar, they have a partial positive end and a partial negative end, but positive and negative aren't super attracted towards neutral. And so typically, uh, compounds made up with non-polar covalent bonds are not going to be water soluble in general. Finally, since electrons are equally shared between the atoms, ions are not formed. Without these ions, uh, non-polar covalent compounds tend not to be electrically conductive. Unlike nonpolar covalent bonds, where electrons are equally shared between two atoms, polar covalent bonds have an unequal sharing of electrons, where one atom is more electronegative than the other, so the electrons are more attracted to that particular element. However, this attraction is not strong enough to completely transfer and rip off that electron permanently, so that therefore it's not an ionic bond, as no ions are formed. However, there is enough of a charge separation to result in polarity where one end will be partially negative, so that's the symbol for partially negative or slightly negative, and one to be partially positive, slightly positive. Due to these partial charges, we're going to have the following physical properties. In terms of melting point and boiling point, it won't be as high as an ionic compound because they have definitely positive, definitely negative charges that hold them together tightly, and it won't be as low as uh, covalent, non-polar covalent compounds because they're neutral and neutral, so it's very easy to disrupt the intermolecular force. But the partial positive and partial negative will allow it to have something in the middle, a moderate melting point and boiling point. Again, since there are no ions formed, we will have no electrical conductivity in general, but they will be typically water soluble because the partial positive charge of one molecule will attract the partial negative charge of the other. In such instances, we would say that the polar molecules are miscible. They mix well together. Alright, in our next video tutorial, we will discuss chemical nomenclature.